Um, yeah, a lot of people couldn't quite get what you were saying when you mentioned, I would rather, when asked about transfer situation at Manchester City, I would rather Manchester City spend £40 million on Tammy Abraham than £150 million pounds to sign Harry Kane. You can understand, <laughs> Trevor, why a lot of people heard that and thought, what on earth is Trevor Sinclair yeah. going on about? Is he being balmy? Because we know what Harry Kane is capable of season upon season upon season. Yeah. So for you to sort of suggest, no, 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 let's think, ignore what Harry Kane's achieved and let's go for Tammy Abraham. Do, do you understand why people are thinking, I can what understand, are you doing? Natalie, I can 100% understand, you know, Harry Kane has been outstanding. He is an outstanding talent. Um, he's done so well for Tottenham in England. 242 uh, games at Tottenham, 166 Premier League goals. It, it, his record speaks for itself. It's not about what he brings to the table as a player. Right. It's me looking at the sport and probably spending a little bit too much time with Simon Jordan, but I don't <laughs> think 100, 160 million pounds, spending that on a player that's 28 years old, I don't think that's good for the sport. I don't think it's good for Manchester City, um, even though he would win a lot of games for the club because he's a great player. I just don't think it's good for them. We can't continue. And, and basically, it's the, the longevity of our sport, which is the reason why I wouldn't want Manchester City to massively break the British transfer record. They've not even got anywhere near a British transfer record up until now. This would be almost like, not doubling it, but almost mm. getting in and around doubling the British transfer record. I don't think it'd be good for the sport. I'm from a, a little place called Whitefield, which is North Manchester, near Bury. Bury went out of business for overspending. Basically, they were the morals behind the reason why I didn't want to Manchester City to sign Harry Kane. Not because he's not a good player, because he is a top player. It's because I don't want to see clubs like Manchester City, who are wealthy clubs, just raising that level again and forcing other clubs that can't really afford it to try and outspend and, and spend more than they get. And if you continue to see clubs spending more money than they're actually getting through the, the, the till, they're going to go bust. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't mm -hmm. want to see. And that was my reasoning behind it. But also, when I look at Tammy, I think there's a, I think Tammy could have had a breakthrough season this year. If you look at a lot of strikers, when, when they get to about 23, they score a lot of goals. All of a sudden, they go from like eight and nine and maybe just getting into double figures to your 20s. And I think this could be the time that Tammy's ready to to take that, take have that huge season in his breakthrough season where he scores a ridiculous amount of goals, and I think it'd be exciting to get Tammy in working with Pep. I think he would suit the club really well. So going back onto that original point that you made from <clears throat> from that standpoint, it was more morally, financially. You're looking at the bigger picture. You don't want transfers to continue to rise and rise and rise as they are doing anyway. And for club, yeah, but they're going to do that anyway, but not to this extent. No, no. Like I, I, I mentioned, agree. it's I almost understand. like. The transfer, what is it, 90 million now, the transfer record, British transfer record. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah it would go to 160. Well, it would, oh, that was being speculated. It, it would that would be the more price. than double Manchester City's transfer record on one player. Way more. Um, but obviously, Manchester City, and you're right to say that they don't spend on one player a hugely significant amount when you see some of the other spendings that we've All seen. All the big clubs spend big money. Of course they do. But the accumulation that Manchester City spend is still quite hefty. It is, it is, but I, I, I would like to... It works. They've won 10 trophies in the last five years. So what's or the difference in spending 160 on one player than 160 on two or three, say, if Manchester City do that? Because I think it's a principle that they've wanted to have. It's not by flip, It's not by luck. This is by design. They've not wanted to break transfer records. And if it works, why break it? Why change it? I think it works. But what if you're getting you're getting Harry Kane for 160 million? Let's say I understand where you're coming from, and I'm not disputing your your reasons for it. But my point is, if you're going to go out there and spend 40 million on Tammy Abraham, 60 million on another player, another 30, 40 million on someone, you're near enough getting to that 160 million. And there have been some players that are coming to Manchester City, like at any club, that hasn't quite worked out. So why not spend 160 million on a player that you pr most people would think? would be a given to work out at Manchester City. Well, for me, it's just, it, 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 you can't defend that. If you if, if people are saying that you're a club that have just bought success, if you're break, breaking the British transfer record by that amount, you can't defend your club. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of Manchester City fans have a lot of pride in that, saying, yeah, we might have you know spent 50 million, 40 million, 60 million on players and spent a, a lot of money because we were on catch-up because we didn't have a, a strong enough squad to compete with the top six, which mm -hmm. we have now. 
But if we go out and then spend 160 million on the so-called best player in the Premier League, who's you know he got the the most amount of goals and the most amount of assists l last year in an average Tottenham side, well, City fans can't defend that they're not right. buying success right. at the moment. I think they can rightly so say, yeah, we're not buying success. We're doing it because we've got a really good strategy of buying players. We might spend a lot of money, but we're not buying the best players. We we recruit really well. The due diligence is there. We don't have many duffers. And we've got the best coach who gets the best out of them players. And actually, a lot of the players that Manchester City buy are players that, I wouldn't, they're definitely not household names. You might have heard of them, especially if you're in our industry and we're involved in broadcasting about the, the sport. But a lot of people won't really have known a lot of these players mm -hmm. that have come to Manchester City and all of a sudden they're superstar household names in the UK. Mm. Well, I suppose you can talk about someone like Ruben Diaz, for example. Who... Aguero. Not many people well, know about Aguero. Um, yes, Aguero, like quite, quite. Vincent yeah. Company. The list goes on. So, yeah, I, I would say I would la rather Manchester City stick to their principles of buying players, not spending through the roof on one individual player and uh, keep winning. But Premier you don't trophies. mind them spending 160 if it's on three players? Well, when was the last time Manchester City saying, spent I'm 160 million in a transfer window? It's very rare. Mm. It's very rare. I mean, if you look at, we start talking about big spenders, look at Chelsea last year, 240 million, 250 million. So, yeah, no, I think it's quite easy for Manchester City fans to defend that they're not a completely buying club where they're buying success. They're getting good players in, but they've got a top coach and they've got a really good um, strategy in place uh, and they're getting success. So, Tammy Abraham then is for you. I'd Just love to see Tammy, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a rawness about Tammy Abraham, isn't there, really, when you think about it? Because he's still not had that massive opportunity. Well, at Chelsea, he certainly hasn't. Although he did sc score 12 goals last season and joint top scorer with Timo Werner. And he only played, you know, Yeah, he didn't play as many games. games. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's sort of a rawness that you imagine someone like a Pep Guardiola would love to get his hands on to kind of mould and, and shape him into something I think Tammy's got everything. Better. I think Tammy's got everything. I think he was excellent at Villa. He's had a few loan situations. Um, when he got his opportunity at Chelsea, I thought he was playing well. He's held up plays good. He's got good feet. He, he runs in behind, so he breaks defences lines uh, and, and really causes confusion amongst um, defend, defenders that are defending against him as a, as a unit. He's great in the air and he's quite clinical. So I think he's got everything. He's just de he's still developing because he's a mm. young player. But I think if you got him with a coach like Pep, who can just go through them little intricacies of the game, you could end up with a top, top player. And how do we know? Last year, Tammy got 12 goals very relatively quickly. Last year could have been his breakthrough season where he scored 25. He, he, that opportunity got taken away because the management changed from Frank to Thomas. But if he goes to another top club that are going to give him plenty of opportunities, I think Tammy could be a top, top player. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.